Welcome back to Open, everyone. You know, I'm always inviting you to get social with us. That's right. Tweet us at Frogsnet TV. And while you're there, tweet me too at Rina Valentin. All right. So our next guest has an incredible story of hope. After leaving a shelter in 2016, together with her significant other, she has been able to use her artistry to help not only herself, but others in the process. And she's hosted several independent self-expressive art workshops to inspire students to be their true self. And now she has a new exhibition entitled I Am Culture. And she's gonna share more with us of what it took to go from homelessness to living oceanfront. Please welcome poet, visual artist, and hand-painted fashion designer, Sha Kimono. Ashe. Ashe to you, <laughs> yes! We I'm, I'm gonna it. twist over here. I know, just right? to you. Thank you. Oh my goodness. I know. Blessings to you, and you. I wanna say on air, congratulations Ashe. on not allowing whatever hardship you had to overcome yes. get the best of you. That's true. Look at where you are now. Uh, all right, so let's talk a little bit about really briefly about the first time you were here with us, and well, because we're we're, we're having you back on. Yes. Two years later, right? Oh no, no, it's more. How it's, long ago was that? Oh my God, almost four. Four years. Almost okay, four so years. So four. Yeah. However, you're in an entirely different place. Yes. Sorry, I lose track of time. That's cool. I, <laughs> I've been we have watching a lot you of though. People come through here, and and really, what what inspires me the most is when we can bring you back and yeah. show people that you know there's hope. Well, it took the village to raise this child. And if it wasn't for your support and other people, none of this would be possible. Like, literally, we were in the worst spot in our life in a shelter. And having BronxNet as a platform to, to share our story and to see that there's hope gave me more hope. Um, we were in the shelter for three years, and it was the hardest three years. And funny how everything works out. We got out of the shelter a three-day anniversary of going in. So from February to February, we were in the shelter. Um, we're in Far Rockaway, right on the ocean. If I were in the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just the fact that you have an ocean view. Yeah, like, yeah, my yeah. y'all's like, hey. <laughs> and if I was in the Bronx or Harlem, none of this artwork that I've created would have gotten done because I know everyone and everyone knows me. So uh, I thought I was never going to get out of that place. And art was my therapist. And finding, the more I learned about myself and our culture, the more I painted and the more comforted I became to know that one day those doors are gonna open for me and once I go through that door, my life is gonna change and poverty is gonna be a thing of the past. It didn't seem like that while I was in it. I know, but you know what? I gotta tell you, you know, you were still exercising your artistry, yep. right? And that's what you did. Yeah. I mean, even though you were in that situation, yeah. we documented you, we yeah. welcomed you, we brought you in and we yeah. showcased you yeah. to our viewers. And, and and the fact that you even brought that up, and I wanna say that because it, it, it was just a way of, of kind of encouraging you yeah. to Keep trust. Keep going. Well, to trust yes. that you're going through this for a reason. Yep. And I didn't, now the funny thing is I was creating art but we actually came to the show to do the music right. and to talk about but our. That's the other aspect. And that's of the your funny artistry because that, yes. you do that with your husband. Yeah, we perform as Ashe Jam Band or Ashe. Right now, he's touring with another artist, Soundboy Cartagena. Yes, we love Soundboy yes, Cartagena. Yes, I do too. And, <laughs> Congratulations um, to him on Ashe. that. Ashe. So nice. they're getting ready to go on tour, and I figured that this is a good time for me to to write new music and to really build myself up as a visual artist, a fashion designer. And I love this. Uh, yeah. I, I love that you have it as our backdrop. Yeah. It's beautiful. <laughs> and it's it, stunningly beautiful. It took me such a long time to, to develop and perfect my craft. Like, these are some of the first pieces that I did once I got out of the shelter. I just went crazy and invested in myself. I, um, because of my mental illness and my physical disabilities, I do get disability. And I use it to not only sustain myself, but to build my vision. Uh, everything is hand painted, no duplications. I've mastered the craft, so um, the pieces will be waterproofed and they will last a lot longer. I love, 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 love denim because you can upcycle denim easily. You can go to your local thrift store and, and buy a cool denim jacket and I could just like change the whole scheme of it 
and, and use it definitely as a, as a canvas. I want to just tap uh, into that a little bit more because I love that you upcycle. Yeah. Right? So upcycling, in case you guys are unaware, it's like another form of recycling. Yeah. Except it's when you kind of repurpose yeah. uh, something. Right. And so uh, do you do that because you're, uh, I, I mean, obviously you're earth conscious. Yeah. <laughs> And, and we all I am her daughter. Yeah, yeah. You know, I love that. it really started because, okay, so like when I was in the shelter, we didn't have money to buy clothes and shoes and stuff. So people in the shelter would donate to me their old shoes. And I thought that was so bizarre. And because they were so, like, some of them were old, I would feel self conscious because I grew up in poverty. Right. And then, you know, it was like PTSD to the 10th degree. And my spirit was like, listen, you cannot continue on being a victim. What can you do? And it was like, well, I can't paint these shoes. So I started painting them, but I was using paint that you would use for a canvas. And so it would, I went through the whole messy stage of it, but now it's like, it's become my job. It's become my duty, my calling. And my advice to people who's going through a hard time is to believe in yourself. My spiritual, our culture, ours, because I believe the entire African diaspora is just mirrors and reflections of each other. It was our culture that kept me sane because I was losing my mind because I felt so hopeless. I went to college for a year in Atlanta, yada, 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 but I was starting to feel hopeless and they was like, listen, this is your calling. And when I look at my art, it's like, it, 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 it makes me want to cry, but I take those tears and I just keep fighting for what I feel like I deserve. Well, I can see that um, yeah. your ancestry is, is is influenced uh, is an influence within your your creativity because yes. I can see there's indigenous over here. Yep. I see Africa over there. Yep. I see the Eye of Horus over there. Yep. <laughs> all of it. The boss is from this side of Africa. Well, most you know, definitely, <laughs> as you can see the unk and stuff. Um, and that's why the exhibition is called I Am Culture. As an African American goddess, history in our country has not been so kind in teaching us who we really are. So we have to look into other people to see who they are when they're confident. Like, my Latinas are just so confident in, in their culture and everything, and it's like, who am I? And I think that I've truly found myself in everybody's culture. It's I am culture. I am you, you are me, we yeah, are one. Absolutely. And in, in finding myself, I was able to love myself more and appreciate who the ancestors created me to be. And, and serve. And serve. Yes. It's not just to be served like, I am a millionaire, it's serve me. It's like, no, I have to take this power and remain humble and serve those who need to be served. Poverty is, is, is at an all time high. If everybody in poverty was thrown into a category as just being a drug addict and alcoholic and a nobody, then there would be no shakamono. People literally found me on the train, sharing my poetry, asking for donations so I can manifest and perfect this. And even one of the people in your studio, a few people in your studio was like, yo, I know you from the train. It's like, yeah, because the answer, Ella Gua put me on the train, was like, you have to do this. I was like, but I've never asked anybody for anything in my life. I've always worked. And for them to humble me to that point, that's why I Am Culture is important because Bronx, Manhattan, Queens, Brooklyn, Staten Island, but mostly the Bronx gave birth to Shakamono. Shakamono. All right. So before we go, we gotta tell everybody yes. where we oh. are the boogie down grind so. and, and the do you have an opening reception? Yes. Or? So I want to first say thank you to Majora Carter and Soma Brown and Angelica Castro, who uh, Soma Brown and um, Majora Carter are the owners. Angelica does the marketing, so she reaches out to artists and, and they just really handpick their artists to bring their stuff in the cafe. So the Boogie Down Grind Cafe is at 866 Hunts Point Avenue. It's two blocks away from the 6th train. And it, my exhibition is open from November 6th to December 6th. You can go during cafe hours to view the art. Everything is for sale. I have from digital prints to hand painted stuff like, like bags and shoes and stuff like that and tote bags, which are good for the environment. Uh -huh. Cut down plastic uh -huh. waste. That's right. My opening reception is sponsored by the Bronx Brewery. So 21 and over, you can get your little sip on. <laughs> Make sure you have your ID. All right. And um, the opening reception is Saturday, November 17th from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. All right. Hope you awesome. guys come out and check Yay, me out. Yay, Giacomo. Oh no, everyone. We're so excited to have you here. You guys, yes. we're going to take a quick break, but when we return, Shakamono, she's going to perform one of her poems for yes. us. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.